had a cat um, who was missing for three months, a uh, baby cat, and when we spoke to the owner, they was actually in Spain on holiday. That was the name of the cat. <laughs> baby cat was the name, <laughs> yep. Um, and the owner was absolutely beside herself that after three long months, she never thought she'd see her cat again. And not only did we have her cat, but it was perfectly healthy and well, so she was delighted that um, her cat was with us, and it was a lovely, lovely experience being able to give her cat back to her after such a long time. There was tears. <laughs> <laughs> the, this is what's so different about the Make Your Animal Home as, as an animal welfare organisation. We could build another 30 kennels, you know, another 40 cabins in the category, but at the end of the day, they're just going to get fill up. And Mayhew's mission is to get out there in the community and prevent animal welfare issues from arising in the first place. And this is what the animal welfare officers do and, and what they are here for. We're here for members of the public to call us and ask us for help. We want to be seen more as animal welfare social workers. We are totally approachable. Um, we're non-judgmental. We're here for people to come and talk to us so that, so that we can help you to prevent a welfare issue from arising in the first place. Or even if the welfare issue is there already, we will be there to, to help with the situation, no matter, no matter what the situation is here. So typically in um, the mornings at the Mayhew, we arrange to go and collect our pick and snip cats and dogs so they can have their Newton operations in the morning. Uh, we're also very, very busy with our uh, TNR project, which is new to the feral cats. So this again, we would do um, early in the morning so we could get the cats back to the Mayhew for their operations. And then throughout the day, we'd be dealing with our welfare cases, going out and visiting homes, um, a lot of education with schools and uh, drop-in centres for the homeless. So every day is very, very different and we are all over the place. Um, and you never know what's going to come in. So as much as we can plan our days, if an emergency comes in, then that will take priority. Keeping the animals in the home so they don't even have to reach a point where they come in here. Um, that's definitely one of the Also, there are days where it genuinely are saving lives. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you, you rescue a cat and you think, if I'd have left this another 24 hours, I would have been collecting a dead cat or a dead kitten. Mm -hmm. Or you know, a dog that's been starving and emaciated, if you left it another couple of days it would have been dead. So there are days where you do save lives as well. And then being able to watch those animals uh, from the point when they, when they arrive in our care through to when they go home as well, watching them um, you know, get better and, and thrive and come out of their shells, it, that is very rewarding. People don't realise that um, cats um, mate with family members for example so a lot of people are unaware that if they have a litter of kittens that you know brothers and sisters and uh, dads and daughters can mate together. Cats can get pregnant uh, from four months old mm. so that's that's a that's a big issue because you know a lot of people think that they have to wait for their cat to be six months old before it can be neutered. So when we go out and do our TNR program which stands for trap neuter and release of feral cat colonies around London, we very often get asked, can't we keep the cats and, and kittens for rehoming? With kittens you have a very small window of opportunity for socialising. So at the Mayhew, we generally, if we can keep a kitten and it's seven weeks old or less, then we'll be able to keep it and domesticate it for rehoming. But anything older than that, then we will get it neutered, treated for worms, fleas and ticks, and return back to the, to the garden where the, the feeder is. Um, People make the mistake of thinking that they're cute, playful kittens, but really their behaviour is more like that of a fox. So they will respond to one person that they trust as a, a provider of food in that garden or in that particular house. But when you remove that cat or kitten from the environment and from that feeder that they trust, they revert back to being their complete feral ways. So they're not used to being handled, cuddled, touched. They're not the sort of cat or kitten that will curl up on the sofa next to you.